biggest risk we face is not taking any risks. With hand cut joinery, it can be intimidating. But trust me, it's worth every pull of the saw and chop of the chisel. Rockstars, do you want to take your woodworking to the next level? Well, I'm here to show you how you can get dovetail results like this. It's not as hard as it may seem. And I remember when I first started woodworking, I would run quicker than a gazelle from a cheetah from hand cut joinery. I was terrified of it. That was until I found Cat's Moses dovetail jig. Check out Cat's Moses on YouTube. He is badass. So today I'm gonna show you a quick tutorial on how you can get dovetail results like this. So let's get into it. So let's go over some tools that you're going to need to cut these hand cut dovetails. And these are just my recommendation. Number one, a square. Number two, set of calipers. Number three, a marking wheel or a marking gauge. Number four, a marking knife. Number five, a mallet. Number six, a set of chisels. I would recommend a quarter inch eighth inch and a half inch chisel at least number seven a dovetail saw and some sort of coping saw or fret saw and number eight the cat's moses dovetail jig now all of this may seem pricey but i'll link in the description where i got all of my tools from for the best price all of this alone is probably a hundred and fifty dollars the majority of the cost is right here in my chisels. I've got the Stanley Sweetheart chisels, but you don't need to go that route. There's plenty of chisels out there that will work just fine as long as they're sharp and can hold an edge. Oh, and I forgot the most important part. You're going to need some wood. <laughs> Let's get to it. All right, so here I've got two pieces of scrap wood, and one is a piece of Claro walnut, and the other one is some tiger maple. For my dovetails, I love the contrasting woods. It doesn't have to be contrasting woods. So when you're marking out and you have the same kind of wood, just make sure that you mark A, T for tails, and then A, P for pins. And that will be your two A's that line up. They're not the same thickness and they don't need to be. And I'll show you why. So for our tail board, we're gonna use this maple. And I'm just gonna mark a and for my pin board i'll figure out what looks best and then mark a on this as well and so they'll join together with the two a's like this now before we get started you need to make sure that both of your pieces are square okay they must be square and make sure when you're milling that you check for square because if they're not square with each other your tail and pin won't line up and it'll be a mess. So before we lay out our tail board, we're gonna take our marking wheel and we'll just set the depth of our pin board because we're gonna be cutting our tails the thickness of our pin board. And the pin board will then in turn be the thickness of your tail board. I'll show you an example. So just set your pin board right on top of your tail board and move your wheel over until it drops and then lock that in place. Just double check that you got the right thickness. And that looks good. Now you wanna mark your tail board on the face, on both shoulders and the back. Once you've done that, you can start laying out for your tails. Later in the video, I'll show you another method for easily transferring your tail board to your pin board. But first, let's get our tails laid out. If you don't have a moxum vise like this, you can easily clamp your piece to your workbench if you got some clamps, or you can use a bench vise. Any kind of vise or clamps should work. Our piece is three and a half inches. So being that we have three and a half inches, typically I like my dovetails around an inch wide. So just get your caliper set somewhere in that range. I'm gonna set mine at an inch and an eighth. 
And so being at three and a half, I'm going to shoot for three tails. It doesn't have to be three, but that's just what I'm going to go for. You can go for five tails, six tails, just depending on what size you want your tails to be. In this case, I'm going for three. So I'll set my square to about an eighth inch and I'll mark each of my shoulders in at an eighth inch. And this will be where we start our dovetails on our outside. Start from your very edge and just twist your calipers until you line up with this mark that you made at an eighth inch. So we're about a quarter inch away, so I need to open them up just a bit. Okay, so that's perfect. That's where you want this caliper to stop, is right on your mark. And then go your opposite way, and it'll stop right on this mark. And so now you've got these little divots where your calipers punctured the wood, and this will be your layout. And then this will be your tail, that will be a tail, and this will be a tail. So square these divots over. So just take your marking knife and set it right in your divot and line your square up with your marking knife and square over on each one. Just a light mark. You don't need to mark it too hard. And we'll color that in with our pencil just so we can see it a little better. In between each mark will be our waist. And it's usually helpful to mark out your waist. So now we have our tails laid out. When it comes to using calipers, you don't have to use calipers. You can use just a square and just lay them out that way, but I like to use the calipers. For the majority of woodworkers, for hardwoods, they would use an eight to one ratio. And Katz Moses dovetail jig comes in six to one, eight to one, and I believe he has a couple more with different ratios. I like the six to one ratio when I'm doing like a, a little box or something because that tends to hold up pretty well for me. So we're gonna go with a six to one ratio for this dovetail. So I'm gonna start with my A side facing me and the dovetail saw has a thin enough kerf and opposing teeth that go each direction every tooth. So just set your saw right in that knife mark you made and pull back one time to get your blade started. Once your blade is started, set it back in that kerf you just made. And on these dovetail jigs, Katz Moses has it laid out where he has tails, pins, pins and then he has a shoulder side that's a straight 90 degree angle we'll be using our tail side and you want to cut down to your line don't go past your line just cut straight down to it as close as you can get <laughs> Pay attention to your back side and make sure you don't go past your line on the back. All right, and once we get our front side cut, we'll just spin it and do the same method for our back side. piece should look like this and we'll go ahead and we'll remove our waste with our coping saw so when removing our waste we want to start our cut right above our line and just make sure on the back side you're not going past your line I like to cut with the face side facing me so I can make sure that my coping saw is not going past my line on the front at all times. Now we'll go ahead to our sides here and get our waste removed here. Take your chisel, set it right in that mark, and just give it a tap with your mallet. Just a light tap. And then take your chisel and clean out right up against that mark. 
and that will give you a nice shoulder for your saw to sit in. And here we'll be using the shoulder side of the jig. So we'll turn the jig to where the shoulder side is set up against our line. We'll set our saw right there on that shoulder that we just cut and take this cut nice and slow. You don't want to cut all the way through because you'll risk cutting into your dovetail. So once you get low enough, that should just pop right off of there. So let's cut our other shoulder. So now we just need to clean out up to our marking line right here. And you want to get as close to that line as you can with your coping saw so there's less waste to clean out. And you don't have to have a coping saw to do this. You can do this with just chisels if you like. However, we're doing it the most efficient way, I believe. I like to start on the back face of my piece and that way I can clean out the majority of it. So we'll take our quarter inch chisel and you only want to take about a sixteenth at a time. And what's cool about this dovetail jig is that shoulder side right here being a 90 you can set that thing right up to your line and it's got magnets on it to where you can put your chisel right in your line set the magnet on it and you've got a 90 right there how cool is that so hold your chisel along with your jig in place as good as you can and just give it a couple taps and that cuts directly up to that line. And then clean out the rest of this waste. And we'll use the shoulder side of the jig once again. Your tailboard is done. Now let's head over to the table saw and I'm gonna show you what I was speaking about earlier when it comes to transferring your tails to your pin board. Now I've darkened up the lines that we made on the back of my piece here what we're going to do is cut a shallow dado from the top of our tails down to our marking line and we're going to take out about maybe an eighth inch and so here we have it and this will also hide your mistakes on the inside of your tails if you make any so here's our A side, and this is our face of our pin board. So we'll set the pin board in here like this. You want to leave it up above your surface about maybe a quarter inch or so. You could also use your hand plane for transferring these tails to the pins, but we're not going to do that in this video. And then what I'll do is I'll just stick my chisel back in here, and that'll level it out. And just push that dado that you cut right up against the edge of your pin board, just like so. And you want to line up the edge of your pin board and your tail board. That's very important. Line it up like this here. And just hold that nice and steady. And when you make your marks on your pin board, mark it lightly. Don't try and mark it hard because then you'll knock yourself out of alignment. So just nice, easy marks. And then we'll mark our waist. And now that we've got our pins laid out, we'll go ahead and set our depth. So now that we've made this dado, we need to line up our marking gauge with our dado cut right there. If we did not do this dado, we would do the actual whole thickness of the tailboard. On our pin board, we only mark the face and the back. We do not mark the shoulders. So I like to start with the back of the pin board facing me. And we'll set our right side of the saw, these teeth right here, right up against that knife mark. And just pull your saw back one time. Now that we made a little kerf, just set your saw right in that kerf you made. And this is where we'll use the pins on this jig. So we'll line up our pin on the right side here. 
and make this cut. Just go straight down to your line. Don't go past it. And just repeat these steps. And then we'll spin our board and then we'll use the opposite side of the pins. And you can see when we set our jig on the pin board, it lines right up with our mark with the same angle. That's the beauty of this jig. Now we'll take our coping saw and cut the pins out the same way we did our tails right down to that line. You want to cut right down to it and right above it. And now we just clean out our waste with the chisels. So we'll clean out the majority only going a sixteenth at a time and you don't want to go all the way through. You just want to go about halfway. So when you're cleaning out the waste up against your pin, you need to hold your chisel at an angle and just follow that angle of the pin as best you can. Now what I mean by when I say line your chisels up with your pins, see how that's at an angle? You want your chisel when you start smacking it to be at an angle, just like this on both sides of your pins without bruising the shoulders with the corner of your chisel. And they make skew chisels for this. However, I don't have any skew chisels for your face side. I'm gonna tilt my chisel back towards me just slightly to where I get an undercut. That way, I know for a fact my tails will sit nice and tight in there. All right, guys, and if you did everything right, your dovetail should fit in just like so. So we're gonna glue this up, and if you have any gaps, I'm gonna show you a little trick really quick to get rid of those gaps. I don't have any gaps. <laughs> well, say you do have gaps, okay? It's a good idea to save your sawdust from when you saw your boards. Whenever you went to glue your piece, you would take some of that sawdust and just sprinkle it right over your gaps, right over the glue and everything. And then just rub that glue in with that sawdust and that will make any of your gaps disappear. And then take a damp rag or a towel and wipe down your joint. So we're gonna let this dry, we'll sand it up, and I'll put some finish on it. It's a highly debatable topic, but some woodworkers prefer to leave their marking gauge line on their dovetails, and some prefer to sand it off. However, I keep it on, just because I think it looks a little more badass and hand cut. I hope you rock stars found this video informative. I was trying to make it as entertaining as possible because a lot of videos on how to cut dovetails can get really boring and I hope I kept it entertaining. So don't keep running away from the hand cut joinery. It's super satisfying. Maybe next time I'll show you how to do the half line houndstooth dovetail. <laughs>